So first, I just wanted to thank Andrew Belvelt for uh, inviting me to contribute to the catalog to this really remarkable show and also um, uh, for the invitation to reprise part of that material for this panel today. So suggested uh, in my title, which you see here, I set out to revisit the nexus of the counterculture and computerization uh, at a specific moment in history, circa 1971, uh, to think through what happened when hippies or, or hippie architects met computers. Uh, and so in that context, I, I trace a story of the ant farm collectives encounters with an, an appropriation of information networks and computer technologies, an encounter mediated in part by uh, countercultural celebrity Stuart Brand. Brand, of course, is widely remembered for launching the Whole Earth Catalog in 1968, promising access to tools and information. It was an important piece of media infrastructure for the Back to the Land movement and the alternative lifestyles that thrived in the late 1960s uh, and the early 1970s, uh, and is more often associated with a sort of low-tech, do-it-yourself ethos than with computers. So the far from dominant sales items, entries on computer graphic interfaces, computer animation, and computers appear in the catalog amidst a very heterogeneous array of items, a particularly high number appearing uh, in the outlaw area issue, um, uh, it's actually a supplement from January 1970. Uh, 1970. Uh, where am I here? So the last whole earth catalog even listed, Jesse Reichardt's Cybernetic Serendipity of 1969 and Nicholas Negroponte's The Architecture Machine of 1970, Vanguard engagements with computers in art and architecture, respectively. Brand read Cybernetic Serendipity as demonstrating, and I quote, how art and science are going to come together, presenting it as evidence of a real mutual domain, now that, and I quote again, computers got common enough for funky hands to lay hold of them to do tricks for funky heads, end quote. The Architecture Machine, a book detailing research produced by MIT's Architecture Machine Group, uh, and hence far from alternative, was cast as a book of beginning efforts to domesticate computers, good intro to life with dumbfuck genius machines. In his groundbreaking study of brand from counterculture to cyberculture, Fred Turner noted that although few traces of computers appear in the catalog, brand operated as a significant bridge between the communal aspirations of the counterculture and key centers of Cold War era computer research within the Bay Area through his entrepreneurial brokering of what he called network forums, that's Turner's term, stressing the shared vision of technologies as tools for personal and social change, brand's network forum, Turner argues, heralded and even sort of shepherded uh, the emergence of network modes of techno-social life that became increasingly dominant in the 1990s. Uh, and I should have changed slides here, but this is okay. So I wanted to ask how, in the context of this period, we might cast the relation between brands' techno-optimistic and, in this sense, quite modernist embrace of uh, computer technology as promising a better world, and the alternative ethos of hippie culture manifest in the work of Ant Farm. So I wanted to ask what type of future brand attempted to script as he sought to bridge between hippies and computers, and whether this type of coming together was in fact a seamless process. So within this framework and the, from the perspective of uh, architectural history, Ant Farm's truck stop network, and you see one part of that on the right here, emerged as significant. There's a beautiful installation of this map. This uh, it's actually a, um, a place map, as you would find at a truck stop uh, restaurant. So today I want to briefly recall a couple of intersections of Brand and Ant Farm, then to turn to Truck Stop Network and to Brand's unexpected announcement uh, at the end uh, of the end of the Whole Earth Catalog in 1971 and his 1972 embrace of computers in space war, fanatic life and symbolic death among the computer bums, uh, a text appearing in Rolling Stone. So this is a sort of, sort of briefer and linear version uh, of what I argue, but I hope it underscores how Ant Farm's artistic practices were not in fact reducible to Brand's embrace of corporate and military research and his ultimately more technocratic aims. So in September 1969, Curtis Schreier and Andy, Andy Shapiro, then South Coast but soon to be part of Ant Farm, participated in Paradam, an autumn equinox event designed, and I quote, to bring people from technological and long-haired worlds together. 
For the occasion, Schreier fabricated an inflatable space egg, and you see his beautiful drawing on the left, replete with a light pillow, an oil and massage wing, a surface to project movies, and a salami-shaped cylinder attachment with tight ends to house a performance by electronic musician Martin Bartlett. Bartlett, a former student of David Tudor, working with interactive computer-aided improvisation, was then developing his black box analog synthesizer for live performance, a, a technology that helped uh, fuel the sort of trippy atmosphere. Brand published a small account of Paradigm in the outlaw area issue of the catalog. In addition to key figures associated with alternative shelter technologies and communal living and forms of alternative consciousness like Jay Baldwin, Lloyd Kahn, Steve Durkee, communards from Drop City, Libre, Placitus, and Hog Farm, the event included figures from a multi-million dollar computer research lab, the Augmented Human Intellect Research Center, or ARC, at the Stanford Research Institute, or SRI, described as a group, and I quote, a group of people evolving sophisticated computer technology to enhance human intellectual capabilities. The primary focus for Paradigm, the invitation stressed, will not be radical politics, but rather the exploration and discussion of alternative directions for change in our physical, technological, institutional, and intellectual worlds. Energy has been building, things are happening, people are doing new things, it reads, adding in a telling manner that the event aimed, and I quote, to capture, exchange, redirect, and release this energy. So to what ends, I wanted to ask, was this energy to be captured and redirected by Brand and his colleagues at SRI? In March 1970, Ant Farm uh, appeared alongside Brands, Holeth Truck Stop, and other groups at the Freestone Conference, a spring equinox event and really a type of paradigm redux. Schreier diagrammed the interconnections at work between an expanded set of groups and to one side, as you see here, was SRI's ARC, uh, connected to Whole Earth and the Parnassus Institute directly, and through them accessing the larger network of alternative practices and knowledges. In December that year, Anfam provided a giant inflatable pillow to serve as a mobile uh, production facility uh, for the Whole Earth Catalog Supplement in the California desert. Shortly after which, uh, and funded by art patrons, they customized the media van, fabricated other mobile equipment for a cross-country cross -country truck stop tour, including the NASA-inspired inflatable Ice-9 that you see in the background here, uh, a 20-foot PVS uh, geodesic dome, and a solar-powered life support module. They returned to San Francisco just in time to collaborate with alternative video groups such as Media Access Center uh, and Rain Dance to film Brand's notorious demise party for the catalog, a theatrical extravaganza replete with bloody belly dances, clowns, and music, and wherein Brand passed out $20,000 of $100 bills, hoping to entrain hippies to see money as yet another tool or means of access. Conceived as a coast-to-coast -coast experimental community, Truck Stop Network emerged within this ambiguous context. It imagined a mobile community equipped with nomadic shelters and high-tech equipment, along with a computer-controlled network of communication interfaces and occupying the obsolescent infrastructure of the military-industrial complex with the hope of inhabiting America differently. Many documents referenced people and components from brands' network forums. Truck Stop Fantasy One, I don't have an image of this document, even identified the whole Earth catalog as the precedent that invented new networks. In a script for a media presentation, and again in the truck stop placemat, we find a familiar cast of characters from Brands Forums that I go into more detail in the text. Uh, in a preparatory sketch of the various systems, Ant Farm listed computer link, video link, radio link, telephone, education, tech access, economic system, energy system, inflatables, mobile components, and governments. The entry on computer links read, and I quote, what role do computers play in the network? Maybe a man from IBM should come over and rap, get into what-if fantasy with existing tech. A note underscored the need on more on computer link, the need for more on computer link, outlining a set of possibilities for new forms of social media, and I quote again, information dispersal, plug into video, events, video friend, used campers, rides wanted, messages, love letters, electronic classifieds with Xerox for instant hard copies, or like a whole sort of framework for thinking the future of social media. 
So on the question of government, the truck stop network was also to create its own institutions, function like, a, I mean, obviously it tried to function like a new country, shelter its own citizens, etc. And so the entry here reads, how are decisions made? Blah, blah. I don't know shit about this one, Cap'n. Maybe government should be obsolete with a very efficient information transfer system. No more politicians, law. Will there be pigs in truck stop army? And there's lots of question marks here. And I wanted to suggest that, if, on the one hand, exhibiting a similar type of anti-governance rhetoric uh, to Brand's libertarianism, the question marks seem telling, uh, a type of symptom of, of asking the question of how power might enter back in. More efficient information systems would not, of course, lead automatically to democratic decision-making, uh, nor to a more comprehensive form of political representation, but, as we know all too well today, to forms of data extraction largely serving those those in power. So if Antfam's cultural imaginary finds itself in intense proximity to Brand's entrepreneurial agenda, wherein cultural workers became networkers, experimental forms of life, fodder for corporate and military R&D, a crucial distinction or tension emerges, one that I don't want to overstate, but which I think marks an important departure. If Brand hoped to synchronize his libertarian ideals with the military industrial apparatus, Ant Farm's work sought to facilitate counter conducts, operate as counter media, and provide counter environments. Moreover, truck stop networks sought not only to operate within the obsolescent infrastructure uh, of the military industrial system, but within institutional spaces of artistic practice, forums wherein technologies could reappear within quotation marks, where certain untimeliness or desynchronization was possible, facilitating a type of drift or grafting into new contexts that did not leave the images, technologies, or institutions untouched. Truck stop network artifacts like Ice Nine, the media van, etc., along with documentation from the tour, was supposed to culminate in an exhibition at the Corcoran Gallery in Washington, D.C. This did not actually pan out. Oh, sorry, I was supposed to show that for a while here. It did not actually pan out, but the tour furthered Ant Farm's connection to the video underground, including Michael Schamberg uh, and Rain Dance, and leading to the commission of the design for Guerrilla Television. This appeared late in 1971, presenting practices of using media as tools for cultural and political inversion of dominant networks. The 32-minute video by Ant Farm, Rain Dance and Media Access Center called Aspects of Demise, the Whole Earth Demise Party, situated Brand's pranks within a larger apparatus. If it presented Brand watching over and at times orchestrating scenes of bacchanalia like belly dances, Irish jigs, cash circulating, being counted and stacked, it also cuts to the Nixon wedding, Trisha Nixon's wedding uh, that was sponsored by Gulf Oil on TV in Ant Farm's warehouse, producing a potent juxtaposition of their funky refrigerator, I-6, that you see here, and alternative abodes uh, uh, within mainstream media. And in turn to Brand's appearance on TV in the wake of the event. Brand proudly announced to Dick Cavett that his guests had learned a lot from being confronted with the potential of money, that they went through real change, shifting from calls to burn money to recognize the power of what he called the juice. He insisted that the process of identifying with money's potential had left a mark, calling the demise party, and I quote, a strong seminar on money and responsibility. Yes, I was trying to script the, uh, the countercultural um, uh, transformation here. So in the wake of the demise party, Brand then turned overtly to celebrate computers, desublimating, desublimating the manner in which they had haunted the catalog. Ready or not, computers are coming to the people. That's good news, maybe the best since psychedelics, Space War Begins, alerting the reader that at play was both the utopian discourse of access to tools and celebration of mind-altering forms of consciousness. As Turner notes, space war effectively linked corporation and government-funded computer research to new communalist ideals. Space warriors appeared as new countercultural pioneers, those making computers into tools for transformation in a whole earth tradition. So Brand's story smoothly weaved together SRI's IRC, Xerox Park, Stanford's AI Lab, MIT's Electrical Engineering, the U.S. Department of Defense's uh, Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA, now DARPA, um, and under the subtitle Countercomputer, the alternative group Resource One, key protagonists within a recently formed San Francisco urban commune, Project One. So all was one. Yeah, he uh, elided their distinctions. 
So prior to identifying nodes within this network, Brand recalled his encounter with a nighttime uh, game of space war at Stanford's AI lab. Invented at MIT in the early 1960s, Space War was an early interactive multi-user computer video game in which players controlled torpedo-armed spaceships, each attempting to shoot other spaceships while avoiding the gravity pull of a central star or sun that constantly threatened collision. And I quote him here, for intense hours, much frenzy and skilled concerted action, a 15 ring circus in 10 different directions, the most buzz, buzz, busy scene I've been around since Mary Prankster's acid tests. And really, it's just a normal night at the AI project at any suitably hairy computer research project. So suggesting that most computer scientists were heads, those searching for self-realization as distinct from the hedonistic tendencies of freaks, he cast space warriors as a new and important vanguard. For, as he put it, the rest of the counterculture is laid low and back these days, showing none of this kind of zeal. To him raising the question of what then? For Brand, the answer seemed self-evident. Embrace military and corporate research and capital as the new experimental territory. Faced with the waning of countercultural energy, as he saw it, computer bums and hackers were not only fanatics with a potent new toy, but celebrated as the new counterculture. In scouting a leading edge of technology, he posited, they were, uh, in, again, in sort of libertarian terms, and marking his indebtedness to Arbuckminster Fuller, they were helping to forge a new outlaw country. For Fuller, as for Brand, outlaw areas were those suspended, at least temporarily, beyond the regulating function of the law or government, hence facilitating experimentation. So if Back to the Land communes had been celebrated in the Whole Earth Catalog as outlaw areas, that potential for Brand had shifted to the military-industrial-academic complex. Like the catalog, the demise party and in turn space war share the desire to script coordinates of emerging subcultures, overtly marking out new if unexpected connections to money and computing. The question, of course, is to what ends and in whose interest did such experimentation function? So just to conclude, the world in which computers emerged was far from a smooth playing field, especially given the economic and geopolitical interests of powerful players. As evident today, access to information is not tantamount to empowerment or liberation, even if sometimes that might come to pass, nor to an absolute inscription within systems of control, but it situates subjects within complex apparatuses of knowledge, uh, uh, of knowledge and control. So what I argue in the catalog is that if we find Ant Farm repeatedly affiliated with brand network forums and seeking technologies derived from the military industrial academic complex, and if both informed and haunted projects like Truck Stop Network, their work departed in subtle but important ways from Brand's script for a future wherein distinctions are collapsed between countercultural refusal, libertarianism, and neoliberal ideals to deregulation. Unlike Brand's seamless collapse of computer research and alternative consciousness of space warriors and acid heads, Ant Farm's often ironic relation to the military-industrial complex, from practices of citation to their fascination with obsolescence and untimeliness, exposes seams or stresses within this picture. When refracted through the lens of artistic practice, that is, Brand's entrepreneurial promotion of information flow and network-based forms of collectivity as somehow automatically radical takes on another bent. It's in the way that Truck Stop Network attempted to operate within the network differently, recognizing the need to radicalize information flows rather than assuming that information functions transparently, that we can identify critical stakes, ones that challenge brand scripting of connections between computers and hippies, and one that speaks to the way in which, within brand's framework, networks of power remained largely intact. That is, Brand and Ant Farm emerge as two interconnected but distinct responses, uh, distinct tendencies within hippie modernism. But to reiterate one last time, if appropriating technologies and citing agents dear to Brand, Ant Farm's deployment was refracted through distinct institutional contexts, as well as political, economic, and artistic concerns, retaining a tense intersection with mainstream and military functions, while also rendering visible moments in which aesthetic practice was not a comfortable fit. 
Moreover, instead of seeking to institute new myths and new scripts, they sought to open up a space for conceptualizing and testing a network society otherwise, quite literally through their bodies, harboring a self-consciousness that technology is not in itself the solution, that outcomes depended also on the political tendencies of those in charge of the apparatus. Thank you. Thank you.